Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This time we're going to be talking about the registration and kind of legal aspect of the DIY e-bike. Now it's not behind me today, it's in the garage, so don't worry, everything's alright. Um, so now that the bike is getting towards being done, I thought I'd start the video series on actually how to register it because you can get ahead a little bit, uh, I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, but yeah, in the UK, if you want to legally ride this bike, and you know, there's the whole argument of do you register it, do you not? Um, obviously, a lot of people who build these just go under the radar. Uh, nine times out of ten, or 99%, that's fine. However, not to be you know that one guy, but if you get caught, you know, you're going to get done for no insurance, no tax not registered vehicle, um, all these things. Now, admittedly, it's probably quite unlikely, but you're gonna get hit hard if you do get caught. Now, I've had people in the comments saying, oh, you know, you're ruining it for everyone else by registering it. And I've also seen people commenting, saying, you know, oh, it's illegal if you don't do it. So whichever way I jump, I'm stuck in the middle. You're gonna get people on either side. So I'm going for this route um, to be on the safe side. And yes, it does, you know, restrict in theory, um, things that you can do with the bike. Yes, it does, you know, make the authorities aware of it, so to speak. So what this allows you to do is to have a number plate on the bike, insure it, you know, as you would for any motorbike, and just have it like any other vehicle, really. Now, in the UK, this is done through what's called the MSBA scheme, which stands for Motorcycle Single Vehicle Approval. It's part of the DVLA, and they deal with one-off motorbike registrations. They're not kind of, you know, a manufacturer brings out a new model, wants to test all of them. No, this is just one-off. Um, DIY or models or whatever kind of stuff uh, but yeah it's one off basically. Now the first step with doing this is to get what's called the MSBA manual. Now this, this is best part of what's it 270, 300 page document It's an absolute bore but you have to read it because it tells you all the stuff you can fit, you can't fit, should have, shouldn't have on the bike to get it to pass the test. It's things like what kind of lights you need, um, what power and speed it must have, um, reflectors, brake lever kinds, um, all sorts. Um, I'll put a link down in the description so you can go have a look at it. You have to read it because they will pick up on things in this manual and it's good to have a background knowledge of what they're asking for so you can um, understand exactly what they're trying to get at, which to be honest sometimes is a load of rubbish, but anyway. Once you've read that manual and made all the adjustments to the bike, you can actually start going through the process. Um, so the first thing to do is to get a VIN number from the DVLA. Now what you do is you send an email to the address which is on the screen now and in the description, basically saying, um, I'm doing a self-built vehicle, can I have a VIN number? Uh, oh, and your address as well. Um, I got this advice from Andy Kirby, who as far as I'm aware is the first person in the UK um, to do this, certainly document it on in great detail on YouTube. Um, so a lot of what I'm saying is basically what he said and then I've done it um, and yeah, it's worked out and I'm now telling you guys. So yeah, I guess real credit goes to Andy. Uh, but yeah, I've also done a lot of reading on the DVLA website um, just to make sure I'm getting what I do correct because obviously you want to get it right because there are fees involved and you don't have to be redoing things and failing the test and redoing it because it can get quite expensive. So once you've emailed the DVLA, they will send you a letter like this. Um, and what this basically says um, is that we can't find a vehicle, reg a VIN number in this name, therefore we've given you this VIN number which is what you want, so they give you a new VIN number. Um, I might have to blur this out, I'm not sure. Uh, but it says down there your new VIN number will be um, what, whatever, DVLA, SWA is what mine starts with because it's a self-built vehicle. Normally the VIN number starts with the manufacturer identifier, so you know, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, Toyota, Ford, whatever. Um, basically what you have to do is get this stamped on the frame. Now they're quite particular about this. It can't be a plate that is then um, riveted on. I thought that would be acceptable, but it's not. It has to be stamped on the frame itself and even when they're talking about the frame, it can't be the swing arm, it can't be the pedal, it can't be the seat, it has to be the main body of the frame. Um, the theory is that the frame's like the hardest part to steal. Basically all of this is in case the bike got stolen, uh, they could check the VIN number, um, it's unique, it's like the number plate but it's longer. 
um, and get the vehicle back. So yeah, it has to be on the main body of the vehicle and it has to be stamped on. So what I did was bought um, these set of punches. Let me just try and get it open. They look like this pretty much. Anyway, you get the idea, um, series of letter numbers. Now, the way you use these stamps is basically um, you have to prepare the surface. So in my case, because it's like powder coated, I had to literally chip the powder coat off um, with a mixture of a knife, um, a hammer, and a screwdriver. So you get down to the bare metal, sand it all, make it a nice clean finish. Um, now, originally I was going to do this on the head tube, um, which is where it normally is on the motorbike, but basically it was going to be pretty hard without dismantling the whole of the front end suspension. And I literally just finished cable tying it all up. I thought I'd be able to get away with it, but it's going to be pretty hard. And also it's on like a curved surface, so trying to get it all straight and yeah, it was going to be messy. Um, and also it seemed to be really rusty um, underneath the powder coat, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Uh, but in the end, I decided to go on top of the frame, as you can see. Um, and basically, yeah, I cleared this strip. Um, the first time I messed it up, it was all wonky, so I did it again, uh, one letter at a time. Basically, what you want to do is give it a whack, <coughs> lift it back, give it a whack, so it's at an angle, <coughs> tilt it forward, give it a whack, basically so that you get an even punch. Now, mine was far from perfect. In fact, I did quite a few tests, actually, on steel which turned out to be all right, so I'm not quite sure why it didn't go to plan on the frame, possibly because it was thinner sheet metal on top, uh, you know, flexed and didn't quite go on as well. But anyway, um, I eventually got the VIN number on there, as you can see, um, and yeah, so what I did then was masked off the area around it, um, gave it some coats of white paint, um, basically trying to film the gap um, that the powder coat would have been, because um, there's a bit of a dip, as you can see. I didn't get it perfect, but at least it looks all right and then just put some clear lacquer over the top to prevent from rusting. Now once this was done, you have to get it verified by a garage or MOT centre basically, which at first I tried asking the garage, uh, I've called up all the garages around me, actually asked them to stamp it on and they all said no, like literally every single one. So eventually that's why I decided to do it myself and then get the garage to verify it. So I found a very helpful garage near me um, I took the bike along to them, but anyway, let's roll the clip of getting that sorted out. Oh, so it just gets worse, and this is the face of someone who didn't check if the mic was working before they started filming. Basically, what I was trying to say is that I was wearing a cycle helmet and normal jacket just so I didn't look too suspicious um, when riding around this thing, because obviously it looks more like a motorbike. Um, I did make the effort of at least fitting the chain um, and pedals and making all that side work, so at least I could get away with that pedaling, going 15 miles an hour, the usual. Now, I wasn't able to actually film in the place, and there wasn't really much to film anyway, to be honest, so here I am just waving my hands around in a tunnel. <laughs> no, just kidding. It started raining, actually, so I came in here just so it didn't get completely soaked. As you can see, it got a healthy dose of water on the way back, a uh, bit of mud on the back and everywhere else. Um, it seems to take it pretty well, to be honest. Um, everything's pretty much waterproof on this bike, um, and I tested everything the next morning, and it was all fine, so yeah, passed the real-world test. Now that we're back home, what they did... Because basically you get to get this piece of paper with the other note and it basically asks you to get it signed by the dealer. So they signed it here, put their stamp there and just wrote the VIN number on just to confirm it. And then you have to send this back to the DVLA to um, this address here. Now I'll tell you all this in the document. This is nothing unique to me. Now I actually sent this off to the DVLA and I sent it first class track sign the lot and according to the tracking it never got there so I'm assuming it got lost in the post so I called up the DVLA and told them that and the guy I spoke to was kind of oh don't worry about it we don't actually need that form and I was a bit kind of like well what's the point in sending it and he didn't know but I'm proceeding with it now um, so yeah send it off anyway but mine didn't get there and it doesn't seem to have mattered so yeah go figure now another thing to mention is that what I've also done is stamp the VIN number onto multiple places on the bike. So I put it on the swing arm. Originally I did it as a test, but as I said, they wouldn't let me have it just on there. So I've done it on the swing arm, um, on the main body. I've also put it on the inside of the motor um, and a few other places which I won't disclose on here just in case you're trying to nick it. Uh, basically so that if the bike was stolen, there would be kind of unique locations that only I would know. I mean, it's, You'd be stupid to steal it. It's one of a kind. It's so easily recognisable. But, you know, yeah, why not? If you can put it somewhere, you might as well. 
Um, obviously, if someone does take it, first thing they can do is scrub off the VIN numbers from the outside, but that's one I'm trying to think. Put them in um, hidden places. Right, quick transition, different day because my camera died, but that's pretty much it in terms of getting the VIN number and kind of general brief about registering it. I know I went off on a tangent a bit about different areas that weren't strictly the VIN number, but hopefully that's helpful if you're trying to do this project yourself because there's not a lot out there and that's what I'm trying to feel by doing this. So the next video is going to be about getting an appointment with the DVLA, kind of the form you have to fill out for that. I'll try and break it down um, into as many videos so I can A, keep them short um, and also kind of keep it topical per video. So we'll do that for that um, and I'll see you in the next one hopefully if you're following along the series. See you then.